Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got another show lined up for you today. Oh, yeah, the NCAA has already started pleading with the judge. Oh, chaos is ahead. This is going to get real interesting real fast. I don't think the NCAA expected this kind of reaction. Well, I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. Why, Johnny Ringo. You look like somebody just walked over your grave. This is on ESPN by the Associated Press. It says, NCAA says motions by Tennessee and Virginia will invite chaos. The NCAA states Tennessee and Virginia threatened to throw college sports into disarray if granted the temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction sought as part of their lawsuit. The NCAA asked a judge to deny both motions in their 25-page response. And they filed that on a Saturday. Woo! That's rare. The U.S. District Court of the Eastern District of Tennessee says a judge on February 13th will hear a request by the Attorneys General of Tennessee and Virginia for the injunction. Okay, 13th. I was thinking 6th. says there's no reason to upend this process, invite chaos on a moment's notice, and transform college sports into an environment where players and schools match up based primarily on dollars that can change hands. Requests for radical change require sound deliberation. They didn't have any sound deliberation when they started all this crap. We're going to change the rules retroactively and just start punishing schools and teams because, you know, we're the NCAA. We can do whatever the crap we want. Wrong. And Tennessee Chancellor uh, Donde Plowman revealed in a scathing letter to NCAA President Charlie Baker, which was released Tuesday, that the NCAA was investigating the school and the Vol Club in NIL collective run by Spire Sports. Tennessee's recruitment of five-star quarterback Nico Iamaliava from California and his NIL contract with Spire is among the deals receiving scrutiny from the NCAA. And that's what got this whole ball rolling was that. They sent a rough draft of their investigation, obviously involving Nico, something about the plane ride from California to Tennessee because I guess he was supposed to hitchhike or something. Anyway, that, it just they're just looking for crap. So that's what got all this rolling. And actually, they started out leaking it to their minions. You know how they like to do. Now die! Die! But then when that didn't work and they started getting a ton of pushback from the media and from really the public, started just ripping them to shreds, YouTubers just killed them. They said, oh, well, you better go out there and talk about this because this isn't going the way it normally does. Just step across this line. They're not shaking in fear at Tennessee. They're coming back at us. That's not supposed to happen. We're supposed to push people around and bully them. Yeah, and you're going to find out, NCAA. It says the attorneys general of both Tennessee and Virginia followed Plowman's letter by filing an antitrust lawsuit against the NCAA because basically what they're doing, they're trying to impede players from getting their fair market value, and you can't do that. The Sherman Act uh, states that very clearly, and the NCAA's already lost in the Supreme Court nine to nothing the last time they went up there, and Kavanaugh's already told him, said, just bring it up here, bring another one up here and see what happens. He's not, he's not feeling them. It says, Tennessee, Virginia have until Sunday night to respond to the NCAA's request to deny the request for temporary restraining order. Man, they are, this thing's flying. It says, the lawsuits want both issued by Tuesday to stop the NCAA from enforcing NIL recruiting rules ahead of National Signing Day on Wednesday. The NCAA argues that granting the motions would result in recruiting inducements tantamount to pay for athletic performance. It's where this is headed. There's no doubt. This, uh, this nonsense that you have to enroll first, then go find name, image, and likeness, nobody's doing that. There's not a single team doing that. Not one. These players know what they're going to get before they get there. Do you honestly think Caleb Downs, when he went to Ohio State, didn't know he was, that he was going to get a million bucks? They announced it the next day. You think he just went up there and said, oh, well, I'll be dog. Y'all had the million up here. I had no idea. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine with the rule of law. Their problem is they're putting rules out there that are the opposite of the law. That's not going to work. Stop breaking the law, asshole! I, just, I can't understand how they can't understand that. They, they think this is Russia. It's not Russia. Uh, Danny, this isn't Russia. Is this Russia? This isn't Russia, is it? Nah, I didn't think so. It says they do not actually seek here to preserve the status quo, but instead to fundamentally alter the landscape of college athletics. And it says in their letter that the response argues lawsuit shows no evidence of how NIL rules are harming athletes 
and fails to recognize that the universities inside each state have repeatedly agreed to follow the rules now being challenged. No, they did not. Why would they be suing you over this? The rules are against the law. Now, here's one thing they might be able to get away with. It says the NCAA argues that the lawsuit is responding to an impending investigation rather than pending punishment. The organization notes that UT is not a party to the lawsuit, which does not save their case. So what they're saying is you don't need to give them relief because there's nothing getting ready to happen to them right away. So why give them temporary relief? That's actually a reasonable argument. They might be able to win on that as far as not getting a restraining order. But that's the only thing that I think they have as an argument. Everything else sucks. It says the response argues that the plaintiffs never mention or address the University of Tennessee. It says the NCAA noted that the lawsuit had a declaration from only one current athlete. And I believe that's um, Lampley, the offensive lineman. So obviously this lawsuit's moving very fast, and this temporary restraining order has got the NCAA. They don't, they don't know how to handle it. It's obviously got them all up in arms, which is understandable. See, they're just not used to this. They're not used to this kickback. They should be, though. Like I said, they already got whooped multiple times in court. They've lost three court cases. One in California that went all the way to the Supreme Court. They got their butt kicked there. They tried to stop people from transferring more than one time, and they got killed in that one. Now they want to uh, go after people on how they arrive at the uh, university. For example, they're trying to say Nico got a plane ride from California to Tennessee. I guess he needed a hitchhike. And you saw what they did to uh, Florida State, punishing the coach because he drove a kid to an NIL meeting. Wasn't in the meeting. The kid was in the transfer portal, but they gave the guy like a two-year show cause because he drove the kid to the meeting. That's why they have to be stopped, because they're getting out of hand, and everything they want to do is the polar opposite of the way the world works. You cannot expect kids to show up at a university, enroll, and then find out, oh, I wonder if somebody will give me some money. That's not how any of this works, and it's never going to work this way. They're trying to stop this temporary restraining order because they know if that gets put in place, they're powerless to do anything. We'll see what happens. I do think that's a reasonable argument on the uh, point of, you know, there's no impending punishment. But see, the punishment with the NCAA is having a cloud over you, and that's what they like to do. They did that to us for two years. They've done that to multiple schools. They're doing it to Florida right now. Virginia joined in because they know it's coming there, and so do many other states. I think many states will join this lawsuit with us. It's not going to be just Tennessee and Virginia, which is already very potent. Wait and see. There'll be more states join, or there'll be more states that sue the NCAA. They've really gotten over their skis on this. They should have backed off and really taken a good hard look at this before they started going after these teams over this ticky-tack nonsense. But they can't help it. Bullies are bullies. They're going to do what they're going to do. So Tennessee's going to deal with them like a bully and knock the crap out of them. And then hopefully they'll start playing by the rules and start understanding that, you know, you're not going to be able to stop kids from getting their fair market value. You're just not going to be able to do that. You're wasting your time. But unfortunately with the NCAA, it's just the way it is, man. They just got to be kicked in the teeth. It's, I don't know. It beats anything I've ever seen. You would think as many times as they lost in court that they would uh, they learn. But, you know, so be it. Anyway, I did want to bring this to you because this is kind of breaking with the NCAA uh, filing their response on a Saturday. So we'll keep track of this. I feel great about this lawsuit. I could not feel better. I honestly couldn't. Given the track history, given the laws, I've listened to several lawyers too, and they're all like, NCAA screwed. They just are. If you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover all this NCAA stuff, the SEC, my vols, and all these big stories. If you've not subscribed, it's on your right and my left. Hit this little button. I would appreciate it. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube. Thanks you'll enjoy. We'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.